Grace and peace and spoiler alert, my name's Ryan and I'm the movie pastor. I'm going to be talking about the movie The Current War today. As a pastor, I love to read and study and interpret texts, find out uh, what they mean and figure out ways the, to apply them to our lives creatively that make a difference. And as a geek, I like to watch a lot of movies with my movie pass. So I'll be applying those skills today uh, to this film, the, the Current War, which in my mind is a, a film about two very principled people that are clashing head to head. Um, you've got Thomas Edison, who, at least in the film, if not in history, is depicted as a person who really hates the idea of inventions that could hurt people um, and really believes that alternating current is dangerous versus uh, George Westinghouse, who is willing to take a beating but is not willing to endure shoddy craftsmanship. Um, and arguably, this could be a movie about uh, five or six really principled people, uh, because you've got J.P. Morgan involved in this battle, you've got Nikola Tesla, you've got Edison's secretary, who's being played by Spider-Man. Um, it's, uh, it, 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 it's an interesting film, and I, I think that's an interesting concept for a film, um, because you've got these people who are... Um, I, on one hand, punctilious and, and really interested in doing things in accordance with their moral code. But on the other hand, both of these men um, are seen as compromised. Edison, for all his talk about uh, not, not taking money to make weapons, even though he'd probably make really good ones. Uh, at one point when Tesla confronts him and says, listen, but alternating is, is better, he, uh, he says, it's too late for that. And so we, we learn that there really is this bias in Edison's mind, that uh, he, he believes what he believes, but he believes it because it is convenient for him to keep believing it and, and because that's a, a business decision. And then Westinghouse, the same thing. Westinghouse, I think, will be held up uh, as the winner of the current war and, and, and held up by history as the more moral man. Uh, yet we see in the film that Westinghouse really is, I, he gets started on the track he's going because Edison stands him up and, and just blows by him in a train from an appointment they were supposed to have. And so this rivalry begins. Um, and, and that, I, I think, speaks pretty deeply to the fact that um, w we have moral disagreements, and most of the times when we have disagreements, they are moral. Most of the time when there is a rivalry, when people find themselves at odds with each other, they, they both think they're right, and the other person is, is morally wrong, is, is hurting people. I think of myself and other ministers, either far to my right or far to my left, who... Um, think I'm off base and, and think they really need to um, fix me for the benefit of the world. And I really think I need to fix them. You know, there's like, oh man, if you could just get this, this piece of it right, you're, you're off base here. You're, you're not following the truth. Um, but also, so often when we find ourselves uh, in rivalries or going against others, we, we find that our own moral compunctions are not free from bias and that we, we believe what we believe, but we believe it because it's convenient for us and because it goes with our experience and because it, it validates our own uh, uh, slants. And we call that in theology sin nature, where we're just, we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Well, on that note, it is worth mentioning that The Current War is the best film I've seen so far uh, to give an illustration of a, a concept we talk about in hermeneutics, and that's that a text is a bit like this window that you see behind me. Um, a text has a world behind it, a world of it, and a world in front of it. So there's 
there's the window itself that's a thing and and to talk about a movie or to talk about a book is is like talking about the window it's got parts and it's got a color to it some windows have things drawn on them or images on them but there's also something behind the window um, and if we look through the window we can see uh, what's beyond it um, and so when we look through a text we're often seeing a world beyond it that is a historical context and an authorial context um, an author wrote a text for a reason and a movie maker made a movie and then there's also a world in front of it. There's, there's me looking at the window and an air in between me and the window that affects uh, what I see when I look at the window. Um, and so for the current war, this was a, a film that almost didn't come out because it was produced by Harvey Weinstein. And soon uh, after Harvey was involved in this movie it came out that he had been uh, sexually assaulting numerous women and that became an issue because nobody wanted to give Harvey Weinstein money for a film that he was involved in anymore and it, it had to be sell, sold off and uh, eventually Martin Scorsese had to step in um, because he had final cut of the film and the director, Alfonso Gomez Rajon, uh, finally brought it to theater. But man, what a what an interesting thing to happen uh, in a film about these these principled people who are at each other's throats um, to suddenly have a, a moral flaw that's affecting uh, our ability to experience the movie. Um, in fact, uh, in an interview, Gomez Rajon said, I really think that this is a movie about the responsibility that inventors carry. Um, when you create something, you have responsibility for it. And so Weinstein was involved in creating this film. And yet because of Weinstein's flaws, it, it imperiled the film and it, it messed with the messaging of the film and I, I think the the quality of the film and it's it's final cut um, so the the world of the text impacts the and is impacted by the world beyond it um, and then of course there's there's our perspective there's there's our feelings as we enter this film and watch it um, and and the film plays with that and, and it plays with those at the end of the movie Edison, who's lost the current war, is saying, I'll forget about that. I'll do something else. I'll do something so big and different that people will forget that I, uh, I even had to do with electricity, that the Edison name was connected to lights. And that thing that he ends up doing is motion pictures. And so we sit in a theater and we watch a motion picture about lights, about illumination, but what's really more important, at least in Edison's mind, is motion pictures. And again, we're talking about the Edison of the film, not, not the historical Edison. Um, that's a fun game to play. And when in scenes of glory I sing the new, new song, twill be the old, old story. 